Hello kids, we are going to study, continue our study in Joshua 8 in just a moment. Remember what we were talking about when we closed last time. You remember that God gave the city of Jericho to Israel. They completely conquered the city. But God said that everything in the city was to be devoted to him, devoted to me by destroying it. And a man by the name of Achan took some things that were in the city. Achan took some things. And when Achan took these things from the city, the text tells us that they then, he hid them in his tent. And little does he know how many problems that would cause for Israel. Because Israel went out to fight against the men of Ai, and they were defeated. Thirty-six men were killed as a result of that. But in Joshua chapter 7, after Joshua tears his clothes, and Joshua says, Lord, why did you bring us here? Uh, the Lord says there's sin among you and it must be dealt with. And it was dealt with in the case of, of Achan. Achan and his family were punished for their sin and a heap of stones were piled over his grave and the Lord turned from his wrath against the people of Ai. That's where we were. And it's important to review because now Israel is going to try to take the city of Ai a second time in Joshua 8. But God's instruction was a lot different than the instruction in Joshua 7 when they tried to take it. They just gave their uh, human opinion, don't need to take all the people. Ai's not that large. God says, Take the men of war with you. And the men of war come. And the men of war camp right here in front of the city of Ai in plain view of the king. But what the king doesn't see is this. Some of these soldiers are going to go and hide behind the city and they're going to be an ambush an ambush. So what happens the next day when they begin their fighting, boys and girls, when they begin their fighting, Israel acts as if they're defeated and these men of war start running away and the people in the city of Ai, all the men of war, they were confident because of their last victory and they come out of the city of Ai and they are chasing the Israelites. They're chasing the Israelites. They think we defeated them the first time and we're going to defeat them again the second time. But Joshua has given a sign to his people. And Joshua says, we... When you see me raise up this javelin, raise up this spear, that is a sign that the Lord has given you the city. And I want you to arise from the ambush and go take the city. And so after they have, the, the men of Israel have drawn the men of Ai away from the city and the city gate is down and the people in the city are vulnerable, Joshua then raises his javelin as a sign, the Lord has given you the city. And what happens here is the men who were hiding in ambush go in and attack the city of Ai. They kill the people of Ai and, and they set the city of Ai on fire. As you can tell, that is a ferocious flame, boys and girls, which is overtaking the city of Ai. And so think about these soldiers who think they're about to win a victory over the people of Israel. And then they look back 
and they see their city is burning. And at that time, not only do they look back and see that trouble, but the men of Israel who've been running away from them turn and they come back and they attack these people of Ai. And the soldiers inside the city, they come and they are facing trouble from every side. The people, the army of Ai, is completely destroyed and its city is burned. The people go to Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim and they read from the law of the Lord and they renew the covenant before God. Boys and girls, that's Joshua 8. Let's go in Joshua chapter 9. In Joshua 9, we encounter a people called the Gibeonites who live right there in the land of Judah. But they say, what can we do? We know their God has given them this land. We know this. And we know that their God is powerful and that they're going to win victory over everyone that opposes them. We know that. And so, what we need to do is we need to go and make a covenant with them. Your God brought them out of the land of Egypt and gave them the land of Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites. We are thankful. We, we know your God is great and we want to make a covenant with you. Well, Israel says, how do we know you came from a far country? Because they said, oh, we're coming from a far country. They said, how do we know that? How do we know you don't live right here in the land. And they said, well, look at all this. He said, these sandals, and here are a couple of sandals that we've recovered from the Gibeonites. And they are in bad shape, boys and girls. Believe me when I say that. But he, they said, oh, look at our sandals, and look at how pitiful they are. But they were brand new when we left our land. And look at our wineskins. And again, this wineskin really looking bad. You know, no respectable person would carry a wineskin like this. They said, when we left our country, this were brand new. And you see this bread? Now, boys and girls, don't try to eat this bread. Because it's pretty hard. It is harder than some of the bread I've been served early in the morning. But this is hard bread. And uh, what you see here is the Gibeonites said, when we started out on this journey, this was fresh out of the oven. So Israel looks at their provisions. They look at their bread and their sandals and their wineskins. They, they looked at their provisions, but they make a mistake, boys and girls. They don't inquire of God. And when they don't inquire of God, they make a covenant with these people that they shouldn't have made a covenant with because they were living right there in the land. Well, after they made that covenant, it's just a few days later and the people discover, hey, these people we made a covenant with, these Gibeonites, that we made a covenant with, they live right here in the land, and they start grumbling against Joshua and the leaders. You see grumbling a lot in the book of Exodus through Deuteronomy when people were in the wilderness, but they're grumbling now as they have gone to the promised land. But because, and Joshua says to the Gibeonites, says, why did you deceive me? And they said, we knew that God's given you the land. And Joshua says, because you have deceived us, your job is to be water carriers and wood cutters for the house of God. 
You're to be woodcutters and water carriers for God's house. So, throughout their history, the Gibeonites would be left alone by Israel, but they would serve these lowly functions. But they are thankful just to be alive. Now, boys and girls, what we've tried to do is go over Joshua 8 and Joshua 9. Let me encourage you to get your parents to read you the story because always the Bible story is better than our telling of the story. But read Joshua 9. Here's also a picture I don't know that we showed earlier of them coming to Joshua's tent and them claiming that they had come from a far country. But get your parents and grandparents to read this story to you and review it with them. And we see how God is guiding and directing his people when they are willing to let him. God bless you.